Hi and welcome to today's presentation where we have the pleasure to present Expression Biotechnology. To help us do today's presentation, we have you, Ben Fransen, CEO of the company. Today's topic, uh, we will have the primary, primary focus or the full focus on, on your capital raise, trying to raise around 102 million Swedish before cost and also have a warrant program that might raise the, the equal amount. So that is will be our topic for today and the focus. Uh, so direct the questions in that direction. But of course, you are welcome to ask other questions. Uh, but for now, and, and the questions you can ask in the box down below, do it in Danish. I will try and translate to the best of my ability, but we will do it in English. But Bent, I will hand the call over to you now. Thank you very much, Michael. And thank you, HC Anderson Capital, for allowing me to present the expression Biotech. Also here in connection with our cash raising round that we are pursuing at the moment. Uh, I have to say, uh, my nose is completely congested from a cold I, I'm having, so please bear with, with my voice as I go through this presentation. It contains a few slides, half of them uh, I'll introduce you to the company, uh, for those who don't know expression, and the second half is covering uh, details around the cash ra ra racing uh, process. <clears throat> And first, of course, I have the usual disclaimer, uh, as we are listed on National First North Growth Market in Stockholm. Uh, and I may have some forward-looking statements. Uh, you can read the details here as we put this slide deck on our web page after the webinar. First, a few highlights about our company. We turn complex proteins into tomorrow's vaccines. That's our tagline. And we do this by uh, developing a high value pipeline of assets within infectious diseases and oncology. We have a very strong patent portfolio uh, supporting our research efforts. And we're targeting unmet medical needs in markets that are vast in this space. We have platform technologies uh, with very strong track record. We have a protein production system, which has produced more than 500 proteins since we started our operations back in 2010, with a very high success rate if you compare with other protein production systems. And this is regulatory approved, and this is actually the basis of the ongoing clinical phase three trial with our COVID-19 vaccine at the moment. We are addressing the global vaccine market, which now is about 200 billion uh, US dollars in market value, which is a uh, a six doubling compared with five years ago, obviously uh, driven by the COVID-19 pandemic, which is a field where expression is certainly also involved in. And investors will know that we are uh, in the clinical phase three with the COVID-19 asset uh, through the license agreement with Bavarian Nordic. And a uh, readout from this phase three trial is expected in the middle of this year, in the middle of 2023, and it's moving onwards towards commercial loans next year. Expressions business model is based on our uh, production platform that we call Express. Uh, and it's a twofold business model. We prioritize the development of novel pipeline assets. We do this independently. Uh, on the one side, we develop fully owned assets such as ES2B C001, which is our HER2 VLP project, uh, a breast cancer vaccine project, where the aim is to, after human proof of concept, uh, enter into partnerships. Uh, we also do collaborations around our pipeline focus. Uh, we have recently, in December 2022, announced a collaboration with uh, Danish biotech company Evaction around a novel cytomegalovirus, a CMV vaccine that we're pursuing in collaboration with Evaction. And Bavarian Nordic is also a very good example of our pipeline strategy here. So there's some uh, good upsides, significant high value upsides in this in the phase three stage with the COVID-19 is an important asset in this respect. We maintained the contract research organization, which was uh, set up when we started the business back in 2010. We have clients that use our express platform for making proteins. We also make proteins on a fee-for-service basis for clients, and we can license this platform out. This generates some revenues, but I have to admit it's not high uh, revenues compared with our pipeline strategy. And so when we set this 
pipeline focused strategy back in 2020. We already announced that this would be a riskier pathway forward going forward, requiring more costs, uh, but also uh, leading to higher value assets. And we've seen that as we've gone along this strategy. Our technology platforms are depicted like this. On the one side, our express platform. And you, of course, notice the spelling of S2, which is also in our company name. It's because we use certain so-called Drosophila S2 cells. These are insect cells, actually uh, fruit fly cells that we have patented an improved vector system around. That means we can produce complex proteins using this system. And we apply this technology across all our pipeline efforts and in, in, in fact, also in the, the service business that we do. And on top of this, we have the VLP technology, the virus-like particle technology, which is residing in the company called Adaptac. Adaptac is a very interesting company that Expression co-founded back in 2017, uh, together with a group of researchers from Copenhagen University. Uh, and today, Expression holds a 34% ownership of Adaptac. And the VLP technology here allows for making vaccines with high immunogenicity. And this technology we apply in the two lead assets, our uh, breast cancer vaccine product, the HER2 focused vaccine, and the COVID-19 vaccine as well. And today our pipeline looks like this. It's led by the COVID-19 asset, uh, which is in phase three since uh, Bavaria Nordic brought it there in September, 2022. And as I said in the beginning, we expect uh, phase three uh, height, uh, height data uh, in the middle of 2023. And Bavaria Nordic are on pass to commercialize this uh, in next, next year in 2024. Furthermore, the breast cancer vaccine project, this is where we spend most of our resources. <clears throat> and this is uh, in preclinical stage. We have uh, made the manufacturing processes and made the first GMP batch. And we are also undergoing the preclinical safety findings that we are required to from the authorities. And we expect uh, findings uh, from the safety studies by the end of this year and expect to file our clinical trial application in the beginning of 2024, so we can start the first clinical trial with this breast cancer vaccine project in 2024. Furthermore, we have uh, now two influenza uh, programs. We have earlier showed the Indigo project, which is a grant sponsored project where we are together with 15 other academic partners uh, pursuing uh, an influenza uh, vaccine. Now we have since uh, March this year, we also had the Mucovax project, which is highly interesting. Here we are talking about a sole collaboration with Copenhagen University, and we got a, a funding, a grant award from Innovation Fund Denmark, which sponsors 70% of this highly interesting uh, influenza vaccine project where we aim to, to uh, develop a, a mucosal uh, influenza vaccine that can be delivered intranasally. We also have the CMB uh, research project, uh, which is in preclinical pre stage, where we have a, a partnership with the Danish company of action, as I mentioned before. And then we have a handful of malaria projects, uh, which are still in a, an academic setting mostly, uh, and also highly dependent on non-diluting funding for going onwards. Furthermore, I just want to highlight in the bottom, the exploratory, uh, because we have in our research, we have high value uh, research going on where we explore our technologies even further. Uh, and that's also part of the game here. So leading into the cash raising round that we are now in the middle of, uh, we on the 3rd of March announced uh, a rights issue of up to 102 million Swedish kron kroner uh, by issuing uh, tw approximately 20.9 million new shares in a rights issue. This is a approximately 50% guaranteed uh, rights issue. So there are a subscription and guarantor undertaking, undertaking, under, sorry, undertakings amounting to approximately 51 million sec. <clears throat> when we announced this 
on the third of March, uh, we uh, announced it with a fifty, a roughly fifty percent discount to the closing price around then, uh, and so the subscription price here is four point nine sec per share. The subscription period has just started uh, this week, in fact, two days ago on the 29th of March, and will carry on until 12th of April. And shareholders and new shareholders can subscribe for units, uh, whereby they, for uh, uh, units, can get a share and a warrant of a new series that we call TO8. I'll describe more of this later. The warrants, uh, in fact, will uh, be able to be exercised in September during 7th through 21st of September. And I'll also describe this in details here. Why do we carry out this rights issue now? Well, uh, as we've told before, we are focusing on uh, pipeline development and we all know it's a more risky business, uh, requires more costs, uh, also leads to higher values. And we have some very, very unique assets, uh, both in the COVID-19 space and the breast cancer vaccine space and other uh, infectious diseases uh, products, which are carrying a, a value that we want to pursue. And we need this cash to be able to primarily advanced the breast cancer vaccine candidate years to be C001. This is roughly 40 to 45 percent of the proceeds that we uh, that, that we aim for this. Furthermore, we uh, as I mentioned, we have our IP uh, portfolio in-house. We need to maintain that and we have over the course of the last three years since we embarked on this strategy, been working diligently on this novel COVID-19 vaccine. And we have actually already uh, filed some new patent applications and we are continuously looking to expanding our patent portfolio. And this also requires uh, uh, cash to proceed with. Thirdly, we have uh, put in a pipeline expansion as the headline of, of the use of proceeds for, for about a quarter of this. And this means that we uh, we need to be uh, organized and set in place so so we can also deliver on expanding the, the pipeline when it's needed. This is a bit of a financial technical slide, but it allows you to understand how the me mechanics are behind the cash race. Uh, so as a shareholder in expression, uh, we have just very recently, uh, on the 27th of March, uh, published the, the prospectus, and that was also the record date for uh, receiving a unit right for each existing share. And the mathematics behind uh, subscribing to units is that you need nine unit rights to get five units. And each unit carries a share and a warrant of the TO8 program. So in this period, during 29th of March through 12th of April, you'll be able to subscribe for, for these unit rights, uh, uh, sorry, units with this subscription price 4.9, and that will give you a share plus a TO8 warrant. Later in the year, between 7th and 21st of September, the TO8 warrants will be exercisable uh, and one warrant can be converted into one share at a price which at that time will be with a 30% discount to the uh, average share price 10 days in advance of this period. So that's the, the metrics behind this. The timetable is such that the subscription period, as I mentioned, has started this week and will carry out until 12th of April. The unit rights themselves are also tradable. Uh, and that means that at the moment, if you look up Express uh, at NASDAQ, you will see two uh, uh, stocks, both the share and the unit rights. And the unit rights you can trade in from uh, 29th of March until 5th of April. <clears throat> and 
to cut a long story short, uh, when we reach the 14th of April, around then we expect to announce the final outcome of the rights issue. Perfect. I hope this so, uh, clarifies some of the metrics and the mechanics and the reasoning behind this cash race. Uh, we have more investor news, of course, on our webpage, uh, where you can also find more information. On, on this, and, and uh, maybe me as a, a little bit of a warning, you know, uh, the dates you're seeing there, the official dates, there can be other dates for your bank. So, so be aware that they might have a little bit a shorter deadline uh, to, 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 to exercise on it. It's just something I always uh, remember to mention in these because it's sometimes people uh, think yeah. it's the official uh, deadlines, but the and bank might have uh, shorter deadlines just to... The bearing in mind that Easter time also, so, so of course you have to be aware of the dates through your bank. Let's take some uh, questions. Uh, what will be the structure of the clinical uh, trial study for the breast cancer vaccine, including factors such as numbers of participants, duration of the trial, and primary endpoint being measured? We are looking into a, a clinical phase one safety trial. Uh, we are right now. You know, we've we've had uh, meetings with the with the Danish regulatory authorities and and uh, are still in the planning phase of this. Uh, we uh, have our scientific oncology board that we announced here in uh, December, which also helps us in the planning of the clinical trial. So the exact number of people that we're going to uh, enroll, I, I cannot say, but we're talking about uh, uh, a smaller number, uh, 10, 15, 25 uh, in, in, in that range. It depends on how we want to scope the safety trial going onward. Then there's a question. If the right issue is fully subscribed and TO8 as well, you know, both uh, both the warrant and, and this one, will uh, will the raise fund be sufficient to proceed with the with the phase one clinical trial of the breast cancer vaccine? And, and maybe you can elaborate a little bit on, on whether other things are also included in, in, in this financing. You you gave some percentages, but maybe put a few words on that then. I think Maybe it's it's better to put it in 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 the, the reverse uh, that if we don't raise the the maximum amount, then we're able to reach the first clinical trial, uh, and it's important that we make that clinical trial application and have an open open uh, approval for starting the clinical trial. That's for sure. Of course, if everything is very successful and we raise 102 million sec plus potentially 102 uh, million sec through the warrants, uh, that was, that will bring us very far into the clinical phase one safety trial. And that will mean we can, we, uh, I cannot put a date or a runway uh, uh, period in, in, in this, but it will bring us uh, far in the clinical uh, phase one safety trial. Then there's a question. Why has the preclinical safety study been delayed until end of year instead of being completed by mid-year? Uh, the the uh, our, our original reason behind that comes from our dialogue with the authorities uh, in, in Denmark, uh, which meant that we had to uh, to to use uh, safety testing in two species rather than one that we had originally anticipated. And you know uh, the the safety trial we also conduct in non-human primates and. In fact, uh, these are not as available as they have been in, in, in the past. And I should, by the way, in, in this respect, I can just as well mention also that, that even inflation has put a high price on applying non-human primates in, in safety studies. So it's, it's come with quite a cost increase. Anyway, so, uh, that, that was the main reason for, for the delay. And then the, the question, use of proceeds, 30% is for technical development, including CMV and uh, the, the Moscow uh, flu vaccine. When do you expect to release any data or announce next step, you know, on these three products? And then the hard question, what are the earliest possible launch date? But, but a little bit, when can we expect uh, those very, very interesting uh, projects to hear more about uh, some next step or data or 
I'm very pleased with this uh, resource collaboration that we have established, both the evaction collaboration revolving a, a novel uh, CMB vaccine. This is here we combine evaction's uh, bioinformatics skills. They have a very strong AI platform, so we can design the right vaccine and then we can produce it in expression system. And the idea is that we have a 50-50% partnership and approximately two to two and a half years down the road, Expression will be able to select the lead candidate coming out of this research. So that means in 2025 is an important milestone for selecting the lead uh, candidate, which Expression at that point in time can develop onwards. Uh, there, there will still be uh, some time for, for uh, clinical evidence of uh, CMV vaccine candidates uh, following that. But we have to start somewhere. On the Mucovax uh, collaboration that we not just an, initiated this very month in a collaboration with the University of Copenhagen. This is the influenza project where we have been awarded uh, a 40 million, uh, sorry, a 29 million Danish krona grant from Innovation Fund Denmark. This is has also just begun, uh, and this is a five-year project uh, where we need to. Uh, establish the technology platforms that can ensure that we have the vaccines with the right immunogenicity and the right manufacturability, etc. Uh, so, so it, it it's R and D, uh, and I think most importantly, if in that project also can select a lead, lead candidate. We're also talking about some years down the road. And then there's a question here, use of Prusy, the 27 is for pipeline, including new partnerships. Uh, when can we expect announcement and how many molecules do you intend to add to pi pipeline from uh, from from, uh, uh, from this uh, source combined? I guess new partnership, you mentioned that and uh, and, and, and I, I'm not asking you to put an exact number on it, but 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 you're thinking around uh, whether you want to, how much you want to expand uh, this. I think the important notion here is is that we are now a pipeline focused company and the most gain we can get by being a pipeline focused company is to have assets in a clinical stage. And we're very lucky that we have a clinical phase three stage asset uh, with the Bavaria Nordic sponsored COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, that's very fortunate. And we are on pass with the breast cancer vaccine project. But Looking at our other projects, they are earlier stage. Um, I'm, I'm particularly now that I just mentioned influenza and CMV, they are earlier stage. So when we talk about uh, pipeline expansion, it's looking into assets which are much closer to a, a clinical development phase. So that expression can bring it onwards. And we are, of course, focused on vaccines. Uh, we have our specialty skills in a in uh, oncology and infectious diseases, uh, but there are many medical needs where vaccine approach uh, is, is necessary, I think. And that's what we're exploring and need to be prepared to execute on. Yes. Then there's a question here. What is the minimum amount of procedures you want uh, from the rights issue in order to refrain from pursuing other financing options, you know, AKE, maybe uh, debt financing or some something like that? Uh, so what is the minimum amount of funds you, you want to raise to, to, to keep it? I, I think you turned it uh, on in one of your questions, you turned it on the other head that, you know, if you only raised the guaranteed part, then you could do this, uh, but... Uh... I think that's the beauty of this structure, uh, that it's 50% guaranteed and and uh, that will suffice for bringing us uh, a fast, fast step ahead with the breast cancer vaccine project and also uh, on our other priorities with the use of proceeds. Uh, so I think we are, it, it's very well structured in that sense. Will the amount of fund you intend to raise this year depend at all on the outcome of the ABNC CO2, you know, your, your COVID-19 uh, outcome and uh, your assumption on future cash flow from this project? Uh, there, there is some uh, some royalty, I guess, uh, by the by, you know, the registration and, and, and the outcome of this. So does that uh, change anything uh, in, in your thinking about uh, raising cash this year? Uh, 
the capital. Well, we certainly shouldn't raise more cash this year uh, based on this rights issue. That's that's for sure. Um, and the potential income from uh, Bavaria Nordic being successful with the COVID nineteen uh, project that that's uh, that's a very interesting upside, uh, which we have not dared to uh, include in our in our forecasting. Uh, and so <clears throat> this sorry, this is. Uh, this is a very nice upside to to be sitting on. So, so what you're saying, you're raising this. You have the wine and this one. This is your racing program for this year. Not affected, being affected by anything other side. That that's that, that's that, that's an upside maybe for a future uh, uh, need for for capital. It will continue to be an upside, also in, in terms of our pipeline focused uh, vaccine development business. So, that's good. Then when do you expect uh, the COVID-19 uh, phase two durability data? Uh, the phase two, you mentioned that you still expect the, the, the headline data on, on, on midsummer, but the, the phase two durability data, any, any oh, timeline on that? Very interesting question. Uh, as far as I recall, uh, Bavaria Nordic and hence uh, Expression announced the six months durability data uh, in the middle of October uh, la last year. Um, and, and and so these very interesting data showed that even after six months, you had a very high protection. Uh, the level of neutralizing antibodies were still very, very high. Uh, and that's a very competitive advantage. If you look at messenger RNA vaccines, their protection wane off after a few months because they have a very short half-life, uh, which, which is only in a few months. Now, uh, as far as I know, uh, Bavaria Nordic are also looking, continue to looking into these uh, uh, phase two uh, data. And so 12 months data could be in the spring. If you think about the release of the six months data in October, uh, when can it be in the spring? I don't know exactly. And then I'll ask it, I think you maybe alluded to it. Uh... Uh, when saying uh, what is the minimum, you turn it around. If you do not raise funds in excess of the guaranteed amount and can get another financing, which project would you progress and which one would you put on hold? Would you still be able to get your breast cancer can, uh, phase one ready? I, I think I understood you, but uh, maybe uh, yes. elaborate yes. a little bit on, yes. on this uh, worst case situation. We will still be able to uh, continue with the breast cancer vaccine project and, and uh, we put a lot of importance on that. The beauty of the other parts of our pipeline uh, is uh, that the CMV uh, vaccine project is a 50-50% partnership with the vaccine. So, so uh, and, and the Mucovax influenza project is 70% funded by Innovation Fund Denmark. So, so you can say uh, cost-wise, they are not as 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 uh, demanding as what we need for the breast cancer vaccine project going onwards. And so, of course, we will have to weigh on the, the progression on on, the, on 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 those in that manner. Perfect. And yeah, the next, the, ex the the last one is a comment that yep, if you are Saxo trader customers, the the dates are wrong in there and and they are shorter. So 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 an early warning. So if uh, if you're interested. So. Else, I think we have went through all the questions. Uh, thank you, Ben, and thank you for the participant for asking question and you answering and, and giving a short presentation. I think I forgot to remember to say this is a short introduction. The perspectives you can, for for, for more details, look at at, at, at your web page. So, so that is, of course, very important in, in, in the capital raise procedure. But well, thank you to everybody, and may everybody have a nice weekend. Thank you.